favorite topics on the table today, minus the Dendrobium antenatum on the right there, are Rapiculus lalias. I love them. <laughs> Mary G, Orchid, thank you so much for your request on an update. I hope I have picked out all the ones that were in the order of 2021. That then came in two separate boxes. Plus, I missed a few because, yeah, they just didn't deliver them. And Floralia, if you ever see this video, I'm still waiting for my refund. I still don't have the two orchids and your promised refund still hasn't come through. Anyway, Mary G orchids, like I said, I hope I got the right ones out. Let's have a look, see at how they are doing, how they've coped through the winter. And just in general, I am very sorry for all my dusty leaves. I do not clean orchid leaves that stay outdoors in the winter or are not very stable in the pot. I don't want to be jiggling them around. I leave them well alone, hence the dust on the leaves. Here you see Lelia Papstii that was repotted in one of my 2021 marathons because it was go time. She showed roots and she is still doing very, very well in her setup. Akadama mixed with grit and top dressed with lava rock. The little growth here, of course, is so much smaller to be expected, but it has given me new roots. And it's been living outside throughout the winter. It's been doing fine. It didn't need any molly coddling. Here is Lelia crispata, also doing quite well. I have not seen a single new growth since we potted it up, but what is happening here is that the winter sun did get to it. You can see all the sunburn on the pseudobulbs. Little bit of cold damage up here. So this one's been living outside during the winter as well, and you can see cold damage over here as well. So having tested this orchid out, it is a little bit more delicate than all the other ones. But given the fact that it wasn't getting worse, I pushed it and I left it outside just to make sure that I can either acclimate it or recognize that the next winter it has to come inside. Having removed the sheaths a little bit, I got some sun damage because of the angle of the sun hitting it and it was still quite fresh and vulnerable. So there's a little bit of damage there on the crispata. I'm not going to do the tug test where I check to see if she's rooted in. This is also the first time I have moved this orchid in months just because I want to get her established and I don't have any other kind of support in there for her not to get jiggled around. But I don't see any desiccation on the pseudobulbs and that means there has to be some roots in the pot. Thank goodness. And this is Lelia Guaense living outside all year round. And I keep specifying that because I have others that have been a little bit more babied because of their circumstances that have been indoors. So Guaense has been outdoors during the winter, just biding its time. And the little funky double growth up here, well, that hasn't produced any roots and I'm just leaving it as it is. But if you can see down here, there we go. It's got a new growth starting and with that new roots as well. The setup for all of these is the same. Akadama mixed with grit, top dressed with lava rock in semi-hydro. Lelia Sincorana, this is the one Nina crossed with Bella Vista. And I am very, very pleased to say that it is doing fabulously, as you can see. All the pseudobulbs that are without a sheath were the ones it came with and I cleaned them up. So here's a new growth that grew out throughout the winter and plenty, plenty of roots in the pot as well. Oh, what a sight. I love it. This is Lelia Millery. Wow, when this one came out of the box, I was like, Ooh, oh, oh, no hope, no hope. It's going to be a fight. We're still fighting. This Lelia Millery has been indoors all throughout the winter and it managed to grow me a teeny tiny little new growth right here. And this one is starting to unbend itself because I'm getting a few roots in the pot. Probably difficult to see. I'm very astounded by how thin the roots are on this millery. I sincerely hope it's not a mislabeled one. This was a wish list orchid of mine and it would be a pity to be cultivating something in anticipation and then it's not the right orchid. Anyway, fact is, whether it is a millery or not, it is a Rapiculus lalia. So yeah, we've been losing this bulb right here, but at least there's roots in the pot. And this one lives inside right by the glass shelf where it gets lots of light, but is still protected from the elements. My famous little setup here of my Greek yogurt tubs, I still have Lelia brigeri in this setup since May last year. 
because I didn't have actual roots to work with. However, yesterday I had a little look-see and oh, I saw a root nubbin right here. It's go time. I was gonna pot this one up on this video, but I don't want to make this video so long. Just gonna exclusively keep it to the update for Mary G Orchids and all of you that are watching that are interested. So next video will be the potting up of this Lelia Brigeri. It has been holding on and it's the first sign of roots that I have. I've been cultivating it as I do all my new imports in my Greek yogurt tub, letting it get some water every once in a while. Ooh, there's another one. And all this time it hadn't produced any roots, but now it's go time. Plenty of new growth since I got it, but no roots until now. That took forever. Oh, but I'm so happy to see this. Whew. Here is Lelia Angeri. Look at this. I know, I know. Shocker, right? Yep. That was my reaction as well when I got it in the box. No roots whatsoever. The white is possibly a little bit of mold coming, but I'm leaving it. I'm not messing around at all. I'm going to need these roots one day for anchoring because I've got a new growth coming. Oh my goodness, against all odds. This orchid, wish list orchid, and to see this coming out of a box, it was horror, absolute horror, trepidation, I can tell you. But here we are. I am really, really hoping that I can get this one through. The pseudobulbs are desiccating. There's a lot of stress going on, but my goodness, as we head into spring, I am 50-50 now that it's going to survive. And that is more than I had percentage-wise a couple of months ago. And here you can see the remnants of my Lelia cardimii. Unfortunately, this one didn't make it. I had, or I thought I had, plenty of little pseudobulbs to work with that it would pull through. It didn't. In the last six weeks, it totally started to collapse on me. Whether that was because of the cold temperatures or what, I do not know. Of course, I did not have this orchid outside at all. Neither did I have my two Greek yogurt tubs outside. These were all babied indoors, carefully babied. But Cardimii is a goner. I did contact Floralia for their 2022 shipment and I wanted a replacement. They had it on their price list. But unfortunately, after I placed my order and asked for the refund for the two orchids that were missing, if we could calculate that against each other, I was short $6. So I asked them if they would put that towards the shipping. And if I owed them anything above that, I would pay for it. That all was fantastic. They agreed to that. And then for some reason, they pulled out of that and then they said, no, we would rather give you a refund, which I'm still waiting for to this day. It is now March and their price list came out in January. Incredible. Anyway, I don't have a Cardimii anymore, unfortunately. So yes, I'm on the market for one, again. I just switched the light on. I hope that you can see this little Lelia Lilliputana. <laughs> she is holding on considering the state that she was in when I pulled her out of the box. I just thought, no. And of all the little ones, like the Cardimii we just saw, this was the last one I expected that would survive because of its tiny little structures. The Cardimii at least had more chubby pseudobulbs, more energy resources, and I thought that one would make it, but I would lose the Lilliputana. But here we are. I've been proven wrong. Lilliputana is not rooted in, lives inside, and has been babied over the winter. Now she looks wet because yesterday I gave her a little bit of a drink of water and seeing as she's very, very slow to be growing roots, there's one tucked in right there. Of course, there's not that much absorption, but there's a lot of humidity around her now, which is also great. At least she's trying. There's another, I'm sorry, I'm not picking this orchid up and tilting her, but there's another root right there. And I hope you can see that. Thank goodness one of the two little ones made it because getting these little ones with tiny structures through, the stress of shipping, the stress of acclimating, and they have no roots, that is really hit and miss. I must say if I had lost both these little ones, I would be so, so sad. I guess losing Cardimii is not a happy moment, but at least I've got Lilliputana holding on. There's also so many tiny, tiny little new growths that have developed 
which gives me hope this orchid is a fighter and I appreciate her for that. Here is a replacement orchid because I messed up the first one that grew really well for me. This is the Sophronitis coccinia. And my first one was doing so well on a mount and then I got the timing wrong even though I saw roots growing and I put it in a pot because I wanted this set up as well long term. Anyway, she moved on and then I got myself this coccinia in 2021 also from Floralia. Oh, basically if I haven't mentioned it, all of these are from Floralia. Her state when she came out of the box, I thought, here comes a replacement that I might need to replace again. But no, she's holding on since we potted her up. Some roots have tried to grow. I don't like how black they got because this one got very, very little fertilizer. And if I did water her, I would submerge her in a pot so that the semi-hydro holes would soak up water. Not from the top, just trying to keep the humidity levels up. But look, can you see the new growths? If I can take Baloo's hair out of the way, I'm sorry about that. Like I say, I don't touch these orchids. She has been outside all winter. Yes, I know. Delicate as she is, I should have left her inside. But yeah, I'm a bit radical when it comes to pushing orchids and acclimating them. But in that winter period, she has been working on these two growths, which started just as we were heading into winter. So... She is a cooler grower and I thought, mm, if I bring her in, maybe my dry indoor air won't help either. Fight, just fight for me and I'll help you. And look, those growths are expanding. They're getting a little bit faster now. And in the meantime, some roots are in the pot as well. She is also pretty much just placed on the media of Akadama and Grit. And then I backed little small lava rock up around the existing structures just for some form of stability. This is also the first time she was moved in months. Here we have something super special. I cannot believe it. Just talking about small structures and how hard it is to get them through. Maybe if I turn them the other way around, we can see them both. Raise the camera up. This is Lelia Bloom and Shiny Eye. Look at this. No, I didn't get two. When I was cleaning up the orchid ready for potting up, that tiny little pseudobulb in the back broke off and I was very annoyed with myself, but I didn't throw it away. <laughs> I kept it not expecting anything. And that little trooper grew a new growth out of nowhere. The pseudobulb itself is not even desiccated and I have one root to work with. So we potted this one up in a tiny, tiny little pot on the 28th of December. And I remember that date because it's the April Fool's Day here in Spain. And I started off with a fake phalaenopsis and spoke about this, that and the other. It was a little bit of a fun video, but I needed that small pot. There was no other way I could find a tiny white pot that I could convert into semi-hydro. Lelia Bloom and Shiny Eye 2.0 in her itty bitty teeny weeny little pot is still going strong. This one, of course, lives inside on the glass shelf. Plenty of light, but protected from the elements. But this one right here is not. This one stayed outside all winter. And it finished this one growth here for me. Seeing as you see, that's got a sheath and everything on it. All the back ones are clean and it's growing roots. So Bloom and Shiny Eye 1 and 2, amazing. I am so thrilled. I mean, the size of the tag is just ridiculous in consideration that the pot is not even as big as the tag is. Hey, but these two, wonderful. I'm really, really pleased. It kind of balances out my loss for the cardimia. <laughs> Somewhat. Not really, but yeah, you know, you got to think that way just to make oneself feel a little bit better. Having talked about all the little ones, here is one that came out of that box as well. And this is my Dendrobium antenatum. For the longest time, I kept it in a Greek yogurt tub, babying the roots, wet, dry cycle, letting it get acclimated that way. Because even though the roots were viable, the orchid is so top heavy that potting her up with all the hot winds, I didn't want to do it too soon until I didn't see other new root growth coming. And since then, she is pretty, pretty pot bound. Growing new growths out of her wazoo, like a trooper. There we go. Even the small growth that came through the winter, they held on. She stayed inside all year round as well. And well, she is a hot grower, so that's not going to change in the future. 
She has been blooming for me profusely. At least she tried throughout the winter. And I guess I had little critters that thought, no, nope, I'm going to take your buds and blooms and I'm going to eat them for myself. So the seven spikes that I had going throughout the winter, they were kind of decimated by some bugs. Never mind. Sometimes we have the spikes and we want to enjoy the blooms. It's really, really hard and try to cut them off oneself. The critters did the job for me. So she didn't have all that stress of having to hold on to blooms during the cold months of the year. Huh. And the new growths are already starting. And now I can actually properly fertilize her because I've been super conservative just to make sure that I don't overdo it during the winter so that she doesn't start to protest on me. We can see a little bit of magnesium deficiency right here, but that will correct itself pretty, pretty quickly once the warmer temperatures come and I can really hit her hard with all the fertilizer and the Epsom salt soaks, etc. Right now, I have started fertilizing and that for me is always such a good feeling to be able to know that within a couple of weeks, things are going to be totally different and I can stop tiptoeing around the circumstances. So Mary G orchids, these are they. Little backdrop of my little Tulumnia Avenue, just giving a little bit of a highlight from all the greenery we've just seen. Some good, some bad, some ugly. But I think if I'm not trying to pump myself up or make myself feel better about the loss of Cardimii, I think 80% we're on the good side. Really appreciate your request, Mary G. You know I love my Rapiculus Lelias. This video was a treat for me and I hope that you saw what you wanted to see if you have any further questions. The comments are there for a reason and I look forward to hearing from you and everybody else who has any questions about what I'm doing with my Rapiculus Lelias here in Southern Spain. Thank you so very, very much for watching. I so appreciate your time. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.